let me just add a few words to what Mary Jo has said. Um, around, around on this Zoom meeting are so many old friends of ours. Kamiaga Rendu, ya Karan and Gabisa, Ikut Direk, Gabisa di the Sita Karangini. So uh, we have to give our congratulations from here in Harvard, but we want to give ya Ujap Khan Slamat Yang Basar, and took someone yang took program bioetica dan humaniora, and took long down yang Kaduapalu Skaranguda. It doesn't seem like so long, but uh, it has been a wonderful journey, journey that we've been on together. Now, I'm going to take a slightly different tack into this history and just say, how is it that two anthropologists from Harvard, I'm a medical anthropologist, Mary Jo, a medical anthropologist, sociologist, both in a department of global health and social medicine, how is it that we would collaborate on the issues of building a program in bioethics? Now, Mary Jo has made it clear that one of the pathways to that is a pathway through clinical studies and through the ethical issues that come up in the practice of, bio, of clinical practice of biomedicine. But let me say something else. Uh, Prof. Bambang uh, made the very lovely comment that the university should be, is, needs to serve as a moral force in society right? And if you think back about the history of UGM and the history of the Fakultas Kedokteran at UGM, it takes you back to a time shortly after the War of Independence, shortly after a time in which society was very different, in which there were a lot of conflict in the society and a lot of poverty, an enormous amount of poverty in the society. And part of the very project of developing UGM, developing Fakultas Kedokteran was part of the nationalist product of improving the healthcare in the community. Um, of, and doing so in, as a part of efforts to strengthen the nation, Rakyat Sehat Negara right? In order to strengthen Indonesia. And Part of this was also, as time went on, was part of the nationalist project of UA using science and technology to become a global leader, as well as a leader in Indonesia in healthcare, what Mary Jo talked about, medicine's modernist project. Now, Mary Jo and I come from a department of social medicine, and it's a, the, it, at Harvard, the program in bioethics began actually in the Department of Social Medicine, and I think that's significant. If you think, what does social medicine mean? Social medicine is actually a, a form of medicine that goes back into the 19th century in, German, in Germany that was very committed to the idea of providing health care for the poor. At a time, when healthcare was largely available only for the rich. And um, this, so that the very roots of the idea of social medicine is that it has a commitment to the poor. And then the linking of global health and social medicine is both the idea that, that this is a, is a charge within each of our societies, as well as a global challenge to improve healthcare in particular for those who have the least access and those who are the, have um, the greatest need for health care. And so I think when I think of these two, a department of, of social medicine rooted in the social sciences with a deep commitment to the poor and those most in need and the history of medicine at UGM and the history of medicine in Indonesia that as we know from Hans Pohl's medicine was part of that physicians played a key role in the nationalist movement and continued to become leaders in the nationalist movement because of their dedication to the community. It seems not so strange that this moral, moral commitment that the university should be a site of a moral force in society 
could link together the ideas of social medicine with the development of medicine in Indonesia, and that this is a moral commitment um, as well as a practical commitment. Now, this is important for us because although in many places, bioethics is almost exclusively linked to philosophical ethics, um, in the program at UGM, it's been linked to building an ethics of practice, as Mary Jo described, and to a commitment to serving those most in need and making use of the social sciences as well as, as, well as philosophy to address those issues. So it's been a great pleasure for us to watch these 20 years to have had so many of those of, of our friends to join us my own special interest, as Mary Jo's is in, is, has been in end-of-life care, my special interest is for another group of people who are persons with severe mental illness and going into the community. And I know that that's an area of special interest developing at CBMH at this time um, as well. So it's been a great pleasure for us to see this go from a kind of set of individual commitments to then a real commitment to a named center for humanities and bioethics, a center that hosted a lot of the research that Mary Jo and I have done uh, over the years to watch the commitment of Patnarto and Buyati in particular to building and a long-term commitment to continue that commitment and then to making this a national movement. Because as Mary Jo said in the year 2000, there was the international meeting, but that was followed immediately by a national meeting that brought persons to, together, I think for the first time in Indonesia, from medical schools around Indonesia to really focus on issues of bioethics. And so bioethics has become central to medical training in Indonesia in a way that it was not when we began the sixth. So I'm very proud to have been a part of this process. I'm delighted to congratulate you for having um, built this relationship with UNESCO and, that, and to having become a center that's very important for all of Southeast Asia and a, a kind of global leader in this area. So our huge congratulations and thank you again for our collaboration and friendship over these many years. Thank you.